Welcome back to Educator.com. This lesson will cover the use of the CSS Visual Styling Language with XML documents. If you've ever opened an XML document in a browser, you'll notice that there's something lacking visually. For example, let's take a look at the file called message0.xml. I'm looking at it in a text editor right here, and it's our basic message document type that we've seen before. If I open it in a browser, however, It doesn't really look like the way a web page looks like. I can see all the tags. I've got this interesting little bit of interactivity here where I can use this minus sign to kind of fold up all the nested tags into their parent, but um, that's really not all that exciting compared to what I can do with an HTML web page. So what we're going to do in this lesson We will take a review of the CSS language, for those of you who may not be as familiar with it from work with HTML. We're going to take a look at what an XML processing instruction is and how we can use it to apply a CSS style sheet to our XML document. We're going to be looking at how we can use CSS to affect basic page layout and also different types of visual style. So let's take a look at CSS. CSS stands for cascading style sheets and it's a standard developed by the World Wide Web Consortium specifically for styling not only web pages but any sort of web document including anything created with XML. CSS is not particular. It's been in development for quite a long time. The most recent version is 2.1 which is just about to finally be done after about a decade of steady work on it and they're coming out with version 3 in pieces. So look for that to come out. Some browsers already support parts of CSS3, but we'll be focusing on version 2.1. The CSS is done with what are called selectors. We determine which element is going to have a particular collection of style rules applied to it using the selector to describe what element we're picking. And then within curly braces here, we have our property name followed by a colon followed by the property's value. And there are dozens of CSS properties. We're only going to be looking at a few of them in this lesson. If you're familiar with CSS from HTML, you know that you can embed CSS in your page in style elements and style attributes. There's no such functionality built into XML, so all of our CSS is going to be in external CSS files. For example, you can see one in the file called messagestyle.css, which is specifically designed for our message document type, where I'm applying a style to the from element. I'm saying I want it to have extra large font size, and I want the text decoration to have an underline. And in the to element, I'd like the font weight to be bold. But a CSS file by itself is not particularly useful. We need to attach it to a document to let a document know that it needs to look to these style instructions in order to render the document visually. For that, 